It is now 6 p.m. So uh, welcome, everyone. Um, good evening and welcome to LSU Online's virtual open house. We're so happy that you've joined us today. My name is Brittany Randall, and I am the recruitment manager for our Baton Rouge campus. Our panelists will introduce themselves shortly, and we will cover lots of information, but we will make sure that we leave enough time for you to ask questions as well. One important detail to share before we get started, when you're asking questions, please make sure to specify what campus and program you are referring to, because we do have some overlap between campuses, and we want to make sure we are providing uh, the most accurate information to your specific questions. So once again, thank you for joining us, and it is an honor and pleasure to help you get started on your journey with LSU Online. So we'll start off with Benjamin. I am Ben, um, Roman Coach Team Lead with uh, with LSU Shreveport. Uh, work with uh, with the graduate programs uh, for LSU Shreveport. And Sharika. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharika Kelly. I'm Enrollment Coach Team Lead. And I represent LSU A and LSU Health Science of New Orleans. Hi, I'm Scarlett, and I work with LSU a and &M. I am a student success coach and mainly work with our business programs. Hi, I'm Garrett Ely. I'm the recruitment team manager for the graduate programs for the a &M campus. Hi everyone, I'm Remy Fontenot. I am a student success coach team lead for Hellishy Shreveport. I help all of our undergrad students as well as our masters of education students. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Christina and I'm an enrollment coach for the graduate programs in the main campus in Baton Rouge. I am also an LSU online graduate student myself. And thank you, everyone. And here's what we'll be discussing this evening. So for our agenda, of course, we're going to discuss why LSU Online, the flexibility of online learning, the unmatched student support that each one of our panelists provide for our students, um, your next steps. And then, like I said earlier, we're going to leave some time for a Q&A session just so we can make sure that we're providing the best information to you. And then as well, some contact information where you can stay connected with us as well as the panelists. So why LSU Online? Um, I'm an LSU Online graduate, so I may be extremely biased, but there's no place like LSU. So we'll play this video to show a quick overview as to why we're so special. There's no sound, Brittany. Okay, let's see if I can do that again. So let's go back. Let's try that again, you guys. <laughs> It's not letting me play it again. There we go. Okay. 
But thank you, Garrett. So they can, our, pan, um, our attendees can actually hear that amazing tiger band because that's some awesome sounds there. But now moving on to why LSU Online with our degrees. All right, so this is my favorite part and I'm glad I get to share it with you. Uh, one of the main things that we wanna let you know about LSU Online tonight is that when you are an LSU Online student, you receive the exact same degree as all of our on-campus students. So you have the same faculty curriculum, admissions standards, and you also have the same resources of the school you attend and you get a diploma that looks exactly like our students on campus. So remember that, you know, depending on which, which campus you attend, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, especially when we get to questions, you will be a student of that campus. Nowhere on your degree, on your diploma, on your transcripts, will that read LSU online. Right now, we're sitting on over 8,400 lives changed with LSU Online with our 100% online degrees. Um, this is 150 years of academic excellence history through the LSU system. And we're really proud to bring all of you into the fold. And we think every one of those 8,400 lives that we've changed have also changed LSU and made it that much stronger. A little bit about other things besides getting a non-delineated degree that can benefit you with LSU Online um, is that first of all, we have a flat rate. So when you see the fees um, listed, those are a very flat rate. There are no out-of-state fees, there are no tech fees, and we are proud to be able to offer that um, so that you have a, a great idea of, of what you're paying. And it's the same for everyone, no matter state of residency or program that they that they cover. Um, whether it can be done in Louisiana or it can be done in Alaska or India. We'll take you from anywhere. Um, and we also like to say that we have a point of entry for every student. So from undergraduate certificates and undergraduate degrees to post-baccalaureate certificates and graduate degrees uh, and even a PhD program, we have a place for everyone to start no matter what your academic background is. We're here for you and we have a place for you. I promise that. Um, when you become an LSU online graduate, you will join a very strong alumni network of over 250,000 alumni worldwide. Um, with that, you will be a part and be able to participate in your regional LSU alumni chapter. We have 130 active chapters worldwide um, and some really exciting events uh, all year long for you to be able to network and to um, ex you know, experience alumni um, benefits with all of our graduates from all over the world. All right, some other things that we bring to the table here uh, are transfer credits. So um, we will accept transfer credits, depending on which program you're entering, um, those will be assessed and you will be able to bring transfer credits from other schools um, or associate's degrees that you've earned if you're starting a bachelor's degree, things of that nature. Um, but we also offer credit for prior learning. And this is something that really makes LSU Online stand out. So if you have military training or professional certifications or trainings and certifications through Amazon um, and a world of different programs that uh, qualify for are different degrees, then we can have you assessed for prior learning, which can give you credit towards those degrees, save you money, save you time, and get you started off on the right foot. So when we talk about LSU Online, and this is something we'll talk about a lot tonight, so we're a family of institutions, and that family is all part of the LSU system. And LSU Online represents programs that come out of every one of those institutions in the LSU system. So that's LSU, and you may hear us refer to it as the Baton Rouge campus or the main campus or A&M. Um, but also our campuses out of Alexandria, Eunice, Shreveport, New Orleans for the Health Sciences Center and the Health Sciences Center in Shreveport as well. So next we're gonna talk about the flexibility of online learning. So our courses are designed with you in mind. So even if you have a very busy 
work, life, or family scheduled, you are in control of your learning experience. You don't have to log on at a specific time to complete your coursework. While there are still weekly deadlines and assignments, there is the flexibility to complete them on your schedule. Whether you're looking to transition into a new field or you wanna advance in your current career, our courses are designed to help you upskill and learn in demand skills for the career that you want all in your own time. With LSU Online, you can get that promotion, become a leader within your organization and increase your earning potential for your family. And we would like you to help us accomplish your goals. So something that we do that is unique is our unmatched student, student support. <laughs> so everyone on this call is here for you throughout the process. And I will let Jennifer walk you through what our enrollment coaches can do for you. Thanks. So our unmatched student support begins, well, it almost begins with our enrollment coaches. You actually may speak to one of our enrollment coordinators before you even get to one of your enrollment coaches. But everyone here is here to help you, like Remy said, get to the next point. Um, so with our enrollment coaches, our job is to help you through the admissions and application process. And what we're here to do, and we want you to utilize this, is to help you get the very best application forward for yourself to increase your chances of admission and to get into the right program and be started on the right foot. So we'll be the point of contact for different programs. And all of us here, um, on the, rec the recruitment side, the ones of us who are enrollment coaches, we cover different programs. So I cover graduate programs out of the Baton Rouge campus, and Ben covers graduate programs out of the Shreveport campus. Sharika covers programs from the undergrad family of institution programs. So we're all here doing different things, and we are here to help you. So we can talk to you about what the admissions requirements are, what's needed for that application, what kind of documents you need to get, um, get you started on financial aid, and talk to you about, again, finding the right fit for you for a program and helping you put your best foot forward and applying for that program. So just a little bit about what you might expect when we say schedule an appointment with an enrollment coach, and we'll say that a lot of times tonight, um, what you'll be talking about with us is what your motivation is to do a program, what you're looking for out of a program, and what your why is, why, why you're here, why you want this for yourself. Um, we'll talk a little bit about your academic history um, and where you've done, if you're looking at graduate schools, where you've done undergrad. If you're looking at bachelor's degrees, where you, if you have any community college experience coming into this, if you have you know, high school records that we need to talk about. So we'll, we'll talk all about that. I will also talk to you and start the, the conversation about payment and what you're looking for to pay. If you're applying for financial aid, if you've got tuition reimbursement or direct pay from your employer or how to broach that conversation with your employer. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk to you about what our start dates are and what might be the best one for you. So we can start getting you um, kind of mapped out at a timeline for getting that application in at the right time. And then Remy's going to talk to you about what the student success coaches do now. Yeah, so once you're admitted, you'll be assigned a student success coach. Our team serves as support for you while you're a student. So from the time that you're admitted until you walk across the stage at graduation, we're gonna be a point of contact for you and the different departments on campus since you can't physically be here. Um, so some of the things that will help you with are scheduling courses, cause we do understand that not everyone is used to our systems and registration can be a little bit confusing. Um, we'll also give you reminders about registration as well as help you complete it. We can help get any remaining official documents. Um, if you have any issues with that process, we can also help with that. As well as if you're using financial aid, we can help you with the completion of those documents as well. And so you've heard a lot from us. We're gonna hand it over and let you watch this video so you can also hear from some of our graduates. LSU Online was really, it was a, it was a no brainer for me um, as I began to explore the faculty. You know, LSU does such a great job of keeping communication open between uh, the instructors and your classmates. 
everything that took place on campus, online students were equally included. I would absolutely do online again. It's been all worth it, um, every second of it. All right, uh, lastly, what we wanna to talk to you about are your next steps, um, what you need to do after this appointment, after this webinar for you. Um, you'll be able to apply. You can start your application at online.lsu.edu slash application. Um, we'll talk to you about, when you talk to your enrollment coach, about what kind of transcripts we need from you, if there are any testing requirements needed for the program for which you're applying, and any other document documentation you might need. So if you have questions about all of these things, your enrollment coach is here. Once you start the application and you submit that application, your enrollment coach is here to help you answer questions about where am I in the process? How long do I need to wait for a decision? And all of those kind of questions that you have during admission, we're here for you. And then we'll be here for you until you're admitted. And that's when we'll hand you off to Remy and her team. And they'll take you from there to graduation. So you're covered from start to finish with someone who specializes in your program and who wants to help you get started as best possible. And here are some important dates and you'll see that the um, application deadline and start dates vary depending on which campus where you're applying. Um, you don't have to worry about memorizing or taking a picture or writing these dates down, um, but you will get a recording of tonight's open house and a PDF of the presentation so that you can refer back to it. But uh, the dates shown are for our uh, summer terms um, across the campuses. So um, if you do want to see any future dates, uh, once you receive your copy of the presentation, there is a link at the bottom where you can get those as well. We're going to start our Q&A session um, in just a second, but I do want to share um, our contact information. So you will be able to reach us at our 833 number um, that will connect you with our enrollment coordinators as Jennifer mentioned earlier in her presentation. And we're open from 7.30 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then you can also reach us via email at lsuonline at lsu.edu or even chat with us on our website, which is online.lsu.edu. So now, um, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you're going to have a section that says Q&A. You can click that box to um, ask your questions. Uh, we're not able to answer any live questions, uh, so we won't be able to see if you raise your hands. But please utilize that Q&A box and type out your questions, and then we'll be able to um, assist you. So we'll get started with questions now. So it looks like we have um, a question that says, will my credits from 20 years ago um, transfer to LSU? I see Jennifer wants to answer that particular question live. All right, so this depends on which kind of program you're applying for. Um, so basically, undergraduate credits never expire. Graduate credits generally expire at about five years. And I think uh, Ben and I talked yesterday that LSU Shreveport may have a little bit longer of a graduate transfer acceptance. Um, but for the general rule of thumb is undergraduate credits, if you went, we don't care if you went to school 50 years ago and you're applying and you have some undergraduate credits, they will be assessed and they will be um, admissible as far as transfer credits, depending on how the department answers, you know their uh, validity towards your new major. Now, as far as graduate credits, if they are within five years and they're at an institution at the level of LSU, then they will be assessed as well um, coming in for that point. And this is another question that you may be able to answer. Um, Jennifer, what is the acceptance rate for students applying to the LSU graduate programs? So we don't have hard data on this as far as, you know, there are so many programs and, and a lot of things vary on this. But what we do like to say is that the acceptance rate is high for qualified students. So when you're looking at the qualifications and the admissions requirements for the programs, and those will all be provided to you by your enrollment coach, if, if you meet those, then the admission process is usually fairly smooth and, and the majority of those students are admitted. Thank you. 
And we have a question from Shannon. Um, her question is, can a master's degree be earned on an expedited schedule? Would someone like to answer that question? I'll answer it. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> jumping. Um, so again, and like I said, that we will say, and, and we'll, we're we'll already saying it right now, that depends on, on the program. So all of our programs have um, different course carousels where the program offers certain classes at different times during the year. So it's going to depend not only on that, but on the amount of work outside of the time that you spend in your classes, how much of that is going to be needed. So there is often an opportunity to be able to double up on coursework and do it a little bit more quickly. Um, one of these things, and we'll talk about this, um, I'm sure at length today, um, LSU Shreveport does have MBA programs that are very expedited and can be done in 10 months. So it just depends on, on what the program is, but yes, um, you will have the opportunity to work a little bit more quickly uh, for most of our programs. Awesome. So Rebecca, she's asking, she's looking into uh, the MPH program and wanting to apply. Is there a start date in January? And if so, would the application win what would the application window be? And is the program, uh, can it be customized to fit her schedule? That's a good one for Ben. Uh, I yeah, I'll take, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'll take that one. Um, there is going to be a start date in January. Um, I believe applications for the spring term are open now, actually. Um, so you can you can go ahead and apply now. You, you can. So the way that it works is you'll have certain assignments to complete each week, um, but you won't have to be in class at a particular time. So as long as you're getting your weekly assignments done by the deadline, you really just do it whenever's most convenient for you. So you can certainly make it work uh, around your schedule. Awesome. And I have another one for you as well, Ben. Uh, Matthew, he's interested in completing the master's in nonprofit management, and he wants to do it in 12 months. So is there any reason why a student may not finish it within that time frame? And then how would he know that he's on the right course to uh, finish in 12 months? Yeah, let me let me double check that. I actually had that program page up. Um, so that master nonprofit administration program, it, it all of our programs at Shreveport are are fairly quick to complete. I mean, depending on how many classes you can take at a time, that's really the key um, for that length of time. It's thirty three credit hours, which is eleven classes. Um, so you can complete it in 12 months. You'd have to take two classes at a time uh, for six straight terms. And then, of course, in your last term, you would take just one class or somewhere in that 12 months. One of your terms would be just a single class. Um, and, and like Jennifer mentioned, your course carousel will kind of dictate the order that you take them in. But you'll work with your academic advisor and your student success coach. Uh, and they'll make sure that you know exactly what classes to be targeting each term so that you can graduate in the time frame that you want to. Thank you, Ben. And this may be um, a good question for Remy. Um, it says for LSU S online, does financial aid typically cover the entire cost of the PhD programs or if anyone from Shreveport that may know that particular answer? So typically for anything above um, undergraduate, financial aid is usually gonna be loans. Um, so as long as you haven't reached any kind of max amount of loans that you can receive, you would it would cover, so. Yes, yeah, so thanks. And we have a question about the social work program. So um, the question is, if you have a 2.6 GPA, will the MSW program accept the student? So the MSW program is pretty strict with their 3.0 um, admissions uh, wall. But with one thing is that we want to mention tonight that most of our programs do is they will also for graduate programs, look at your last 60 hours of undergraduate work. So let's say you have a 2.6 undergrad um, for your cumulative GPA, but you really 
got it together in your your last half. A, a lot of people struggle in the beginning and a lot of people do a lot better when they get into the classes in their major. So that's something that the graduate school and the programs will look at is how you did in your last 60 hours. So that number will be calculated along with your cumulative GPA, and that can stand in for most of our programs as far as uh, making you admissible to the program. So outside of that, uh, we do have other options for you. Should you still fall short of that for both your cumulative and your last 60 hour GPAs, then we do have other options for you and other pathways for you that your enrollment coach can help with. And since we're talking about um, social work, Jennifer, we have another question. Um, someone who works at the uh, Disability Service Agency, and they're wondering if their work hours will count towards um, any credits. Um, social work uh, and the field requirements, that is a complex beast in and of itself. Um, and, and I do recommend that you speak to one of our enrollment coaches and maybe even someone in the School of Social Work about it. However, uh, just basically with the requirement that you do your field internship and people choosing to do that at the place they work. I know some programs in the country do not allow that. LSU is not one of those programs. We do allow for you to do it at the place you work. It cannot be your current job and it cannot be under your current supervisor and it cannot be paid. So those are three of the, of the restrictions on doing it at your place of employment, but that is not something that prohibits you from, from being able to start at that place. Okay, thank you. And then, Remy, it looks like another question that you may be able to help us with. Um, the question is, does the MBA in general business in Shreveport have a new student orientation? Um, the, they realized that some undergrads got one and was just curious to see if graduate students were able to get an orientation as well. So I don't know all the information for what the undergraduate uh, orientation is like, but there is a video recording um, in your resource, resource center in Moodle um, that they posted a little while ago in fall. Um, so that is available to you. There's also a lot of other information that they put in that resource center, especially if you're a new student and you aren't familiar, familiar with everything. Um, so that's always a good place to go look at. Awesome. Thank you. And, um, Antonio, he's asking, um, he's interested in the EDD and leadership studies at Shreveport, and he was looking at the curriculum, and it doesn't show the dissertation. So he was wondering if there's one for that particular program. Ben, would you be able to answer that question? Sorry, got to unmute. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so with the, with the EDD program, uh, there is a dissertation. Um, it's a, it's a 63 credit hour program, so it's a rather long program. It's really involved. I mean, it's, it's doctorate level work uh, and you will be conducting doctorate level research. Uh, 15 hours of that 63 is, is all research concentration and you'll be working on your dissertation in that time. Um, one of the neat things about this program is you can work on your dissertation either individually or in a group of up to three. Um, so you can do a group dissertation if that's something that you're interested in, but there is a dissertation component, yes. Thank you. And this next question, um, I know Jennifer wants to answer it, but I'll also add um, to it as well. I wanted um, you but... to go. I wanted you to do okay. that too. <laughs> so the question is, can a few of us share how long it took for us to complete the program? So I have my master's degree in educational technology through LSU online, and I chose to do it um, the quick way <laughs> in 12 <laughs> months. So uh, working full time, a working mom, uh, I did two classes every term just so I can uh, finish in that 12 month period. And I promise you guys, it is definitely possible. All you would have to do is kind of plan out a schedule for me after dinner, at the bedtime, I was focused on homework <laughs> and then I was able to successfully complete that program in 12 months. And Jen, if you want to add how your experience is going. I'm doing that the opposite. And I don't have all of those other things like being a working mom to throw in there. Um, so really um, a lot of people choose to do it both ways and almost everyone in all of our programs is working full time. So it can be done. Um, some of our programs like ed technology and um, I'm in leadership and human resource development um, can be done in a year. Uh, that does not mean you need to do them in a year. And a lot of times people, because they're paying out of their own pocket and they're trying to space out those payments or their company is paying and only at a certain rate, 
um, they do choose to do it at one class per term. And because of that, uh, that will take you two years. Um, at first, I thought that I would feel slowed down and really want to go more quickly and do it as quickly as possible. But once I started and I realized that I only had one set of readings each week and one group project and one paper in a term, it became very nice. And I will say, I feel like I'm getting so much out of it because I'm able to focus in on those readings. I'm able to do all the work and not feel like I'm jumping from one thing to another. So there's a way to do it. You can do it. And, and when you schedule for the very most part, you don't have to choose how you're setting that up to start from the beginning. Every term you have the choice of whether you schedule one class or two classes. Our summer terms are a little bit shorter, so sometimes people choose not to take two classes then. But if you're a teacher, maybe that's when you have the most free time and that's when you want to take two classes. So it's up to you. Um, Brittany and I are, are definitely opposite ways of tackling it, but um, there's a way for you and we can definitely help you with that. I'll and piggyback, okay. I'll piggyback oh, on this yeah. right, ben, real quick. Too. My uh, my wife just graduated from our online MSW program in December. Um, she she did part time um, and did a couple of terms where she wasn't able to take any classes um, yeah. because of because of working you know being a working mother and we have family obligations and she finished in just over two and a half years. So uh, I think it was like two years and seven months something like that two years and eight months something like that so. Which is really yeah. incredible for a 60 hour program like social work. Um, Brittany and yeah. I had 36 hour programs. So, exactly. yeah, um, that's, I mean, again, it can be done. One of our coworkers is doing the social work uh, master's online right now, and she is going full time and is a single mom of a four year old and, and making it happen. So, it can be done one way or the other, but, you know, it's just really up to you how that fits best into your life. I love that question. I think that was the first time that we had that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, another question we have from Rebecca. Um, she's wondering where would the students buy their books and would they be able to rent or um, buy them? I personally um, have not had to buy a whole lot of books yet for my program. And I think a lot of the programs um, are this way where the professors are able to incorporate e-textbooks and the databases through the LSU library system. And Brittany can talk about what her experience was like too. But you can buy books. Um, generally speaking, early in the, before the term starts, the bookstore will receive all the required reading from the professors. You can go online and look at what those texts are. And then you can choose to either buy them and have them shipped or rent them or buy ebooks. Um, whichever is the best for you from the bookstore directly or to do Amazon and get them that way. Um, so far, I'm in my sixth class. I've checked out one book from the library. I've rented one book from Amazon and I bought a used copy from the bookstore for one. So it's all up to you. And my experience was very similar too. Um, most of my professors gave us the eBooks that they wanted us to use throughout the course. There are some that I just chose to purchase because I wanted to keep that knowledge handy. Um, even with the eBooks, I downloaded it and saved it to my computer. Um, so it's, it's truly up to you on how you want to um, utilize your textbooks. Um, if you're that type of person that needs to highlight things, you know, you can rent them, <laughs> you can purchase them. It's truly how you set up your own experience with LSU Online. We're that flexible. <laughs> And that kind of ties into that one question that's still up at the top there about if, it's a, if you're able to get a copy of text and syllabi for required classes. Um, we don't always have uh, our hands on the, the syllabi for classes, but we can get you in contact with the department to see if that's something they have available to students. Uh, the text, you can look through the bookstore and see past um, terms as well and what books were required for programs that maybe you haven't had to schedule yet. So that is something that you are able to do. Um, and then some of the classes, you know, will be able to get you course descriptions and, you know, the required courses you need to take um, and then let you speak with someone in the department if you need a little bit more curriculum information uh, on that program and the courses. Thank you, Jennifer. It looks like we have a lot of social work questions uh, today. Oh boy. <laughs> Heather, she's asking for the MSW, how many course, 
um, credits per semester and how many semesters um, for graduation. That, you know, Ben talked a little bit about this just now. Um, you can, with social work, you are signing up a little bit more for a track than our other programs. So you will determine when you start how you want to tackle that. Um, there's a, there are a lot of variables when it comes to social work and when you graduate. And those include how many hours you schedule each term and how you choose to tackle your field internship, whether you do that part-time or full-time. So that all plays into it, but generally it's about about two years. Uh, like Ben said, his wife didn't do it, um, you know, every term, two classes. So it was a little over two years. If you did two term, two classes every term, the full-time internship and classes on top of that internship altogether, you could finish in just under two years. Thank you. And Garrett, this may be a question that you may be able to um, answer. It says, for the library science master's program, are there any synchronous courses or is all of the coursework always asynchronous before the online degrees? Both. <laughs> the classwork itself is asynchronous. However, toward the end, you would be doing an internship. So that would be on your own time of figuring out when you want to do that in your local area. But all the coursework itself is asynchronous. So you're given that set schedule as far as when assignments, discussion posts, tests and stuff like that are due. Lectures are pre-recorded, though. And just as a reminder, when you're typing in your questions, please specify uh, the program or campus, just so we can make sure that we are providing um, the best information um, that we can give. We have one question from Lakeisha. It says, how long is the Associates of Applied Science in Fire and Emergency Services? Would someone be able to answer that question? If not, I can pull it up and we can move to the uh, another question in the meantime. See. We have a, another LSU S question. It says they're interested in pursuing the PhD in leadership studies with a concentration in disaster preparedness and emergency management. And how long does that program usually take to complete? So that program, again, that's a 63 hour program. Uh, so the so the time frame is really going to be dependent on how many classes you're taking uh, at a time. Um, you know, you're looking at if you did two classes every term, um, you would be it would be 21 terms um, to finish. So that would be just under that would be right at three and a half years if you're taking two classes at a time. Um, if you're taking just one class at a time, you would you would just double that number. Um, so you'd be right at um, right around thirty. I'm sorry. Let me. It would be twenty one twenty one terms if you do one class at a time. It would be eleven terms if you did two classes at a time. So you'd be looking at uh, three and a half years if you did it part time and just under two years if you did it full time. Thank you, Ben. And we're gonna get that information for the fire and emergency services. Um, just Give us a few more moments, but we're going to move to the next question that looks like Jennifer wants to answer live. It says, what were the alumni benefits that we were talking about in the presentation? All right. I like this part, too. Um, so one thing that um, we alluded to in the presentation earlier um, were the active chapters available to you. So we have chapters all over the country and even outside of the country. Some of the things that activities that they have are um, football watch parties, sometimes it's baseball or basketball watch parties, depending on how the team's doing. Um, also, every one of our chapters has an annual crawfish boil in the spring. So right now, I, I think they're all kind of rolling through. Um, there are a lot in May and you'll be able to 
join those. Now, I know I, I lived in Chicago for a while, and we had not only these kind of events, but we also had SEC alumni networking events. So we had, you know, we, we brought in other schools and we had uh, sports events and, you know, football leagues and um, networking opportunities and happy hours and things of that nature. Um, some of the on-campus resources that you'll have as an, an LSU graduate, uh, as soon as you're enrolled and then forever, you'll have access to our career center. So, um, and this is one of the things and I know one of these questions coming later was a little bit about the differences in campuses. And so I'm gonna let some of our panelists from other campuses talk a little bit about this too. But um, when you have those resources, like the Career Center, like the Alumni Network, you get the database of jobs, you get uh, career search help and those kinds of things, but you get that from the campus that you attend. So with Baton Rouge campus, I can speak to that and, and what kind of things are available to you as, you know, tutoring and all the different things that we have available to our students and then as alumni, what, what's still available to you. Um, and then those are different for the different campuses. So there is a different field. The campuses are separate. Um, and, and you would be a student of the campus that you're enrolled in. So Ben, do you wanna talk a little bit about or, or Remy or someone who represents Shreveport or if Sharika can talk a little bit to that too about things that are available to students from your campuses upon graduation or while they're in school. Um, I, I know that there are um, for, for LSU Shreveport students or at least for the grad programs and um, that you do have access to the uh, to the career center. Um, you also have uh, through the career center you'll have access to the alumni network, so you can start networking before you have your degree. Um, and, and you know that we found that that's been a really successful way for students to start lining up job opportunities before they're before they're even finished. Um, I, I know also that uh, and Remy can probably speak more to this that the success coaches are, are a great resource for you as well in terms of helping get you through the program. Um, and she may also know some other things that uh, that are available for you outside of those those two things I mentioned. Um, honestly, you did kind of cover <laughs> some of those resources. Um, there's a lot that can be available to you through the Career Center. Um, I would have to look into it a little bit more. Honestly, off the top of my head, you kind of answered the two that I was thinking of, so. And for um, LSU A, uh, we do have academic support for students that's 100% online, such as academic coaching, tutoring, um, Moodle tours. So we do have some resources that's available to students that's 100% online that on campus has. Thank you. Um, so we can go back to that associate's uh, degree question with the fire and emergency services. Uh, I do work with A&M campus, so I did have to do a little research for you, Lakeisha, but that's offered through our LSU eCampus, and it is a 60 credit hour program. Um, and of course, that will depend if you have any transfer credits, uh, so it can be uh, less credits. Um, however, if you take two classes Per term, then you could finish that program in uh, 10 terms. So it just depends on a lot of different variables. Um, but most likely, if you just come in and take all 60 credit hours, you could do two classes uh, per term and finish in 10 terms. But if you do want more detailed information about that, please do not hesitate to reach out um, to us, whether it's through our 833 phone number or to an enrollment uh, coach now um, that you can connect with and schedule an appointment. And we have a question about uh, transcripts for the Shreveport campus. Um, it says, how long does it take to review transcripts once received? And then how long does it take after that to receive a decision for the MBA programs? So that, that um, it typically takes a few business days for, so really the process is once your transcripts come in, it takes us a couple business days to re review the transcripts and, and have them authenticated to make sure they are official. Um, once that is complete, then your entire application goes into review. Typically, the way Shreveport does it is that the admissions department will work with uh, someone in the program 
you know, the department that you applied for. So for MBA, there are some representatives from the business school that work in conjunction with some representatives from the admissions office. They review your application together. Typically, once we have everything in and admissions is, it doesn't need any other documents from you, we get an admissions decision back anywhere from one to two weeks. Um, so it's pretty quick uh, considering the number of of applicants that we have, especially for MBA, that's that's probably the program at Shreveport that we get the most applicants for. Thank you. And it looks like we have a clarifying question. Um, it says, Brittany, uh, she's currently sinking an MHA and she's working in a hospital in healthcare at a hospital and just wanted to know from what was stated before, would she be able to utilize her employer as field experience? at the end of the program. I know when we were speaking of that earlier is for our master of social works, our MSW program, but if someone wants to uh, speak to the MHA program, if we have that information. Um, yeah, I can, I can speak to that as well. So with the master of health administration that goes through uh, the Shreveport campus, there is not a um, internship or clinical portion like there is with the MSW program. Uh, it, it is essentially a business degree. It's actually run through the business school. And as a result, it has the same accreditation as our MBA, which is the AACSB accreditation. So um, the way I like to think of it, MHA is an MBA, but everything is specifically healthcare focused. Thank you. And uh, Jennifer, this looks like a question that you want to answer live. Uh, the qu question from Amanda says, are there different general business MBA programs? The LSU website shows different credit hour requirements and calls for the online programs. All right, Ben and I are gonna take this one together and then Garrett can chime in too. Um, so basically what we like to say about our MBA programs is the program for you kind of depends on what you're looking to get out of it. We do have multiple programs. Um, we do have one general MBA out of the main campus. It's an executive MBA, uh, and it's more tailorable from the inside uh, with electives and concentrations that we provide, uh, specializations. Now, the LSU S campus offers, I think, 10 Ben uh, MBA programs. And yeah, that's right. So they, they're really more customizable from the outside, right? You kind of pick your your specialization or your concentration kind of before you you get into it um and, and then um you know your uh, your core classes are the same across all 10 of our mbas and it's really your uh, elective courses where, where there's some differentiation um and so based on whether you want to do accounting or marketing or project management um you know that really kind of determines what your electives are now our general program does give you the the flexibility to pull your electives from any of our 10 concentrations. So if you want a general and you want to kind of build that degree out to fit a specific idea that you have in mind, you, you have that option at Shreveport as well. Um, and the question also talked about uh, price point. Uh, so there is a, a great difference in the price point and the time to completion between the main campus and the Shreveport programs. So what we like to say is that it Again, it's what you're looking to get out of it. If you're looking to get an executive MBA, you're already in the workforce. This is something you really want to use to, you know, piggyback off of the all the 150 years of LSU and you're a tiger through and through and you want to get that that LSU degree. You, you can't do any better than the LSU degree. It's sometimes called the Flores degree. Now, if rightly so, your driving factors are cost and or time to completion. Um, then you can't do any better than the Shreveport program. Shreveport can be completed in 10 months and it comes with a very nice price tag. Um, so it's just a matter of what you're looking to get out of it. You know, we also recommend that you talk to someone at both campuses, get the information from both campuses and really look at the course listings. Um, that is going to answer a lot of the which program is for me kind of questions and that you know, you look at what you want to study, look at what kind of concentration you want. If you're looking for an MBA in data analytics or in marketing, then, you know, Shreveport is, is a good fit for you. If you're looking for one in healthcare administration or entrepreneurial, um, you know, there, there are ways for you to move forward with that at the Flores from the main campus. So it's really a, a good opportunity for you to speak to an enrollment coach or two um, and, and find out what works best for you. 
I hope that answered that enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tricky question. Okay. Now, Stefan is asking, uh, when does the next semester um, start for the project manager program? Um, I can assume that you're talking about the MBA program through Shreveport with the project manager. I believe there's um, a concentration there. And then would you be able to answer that question of the next um, application deadline day? So the very next start date that we have for that MBA in project management is uh, July 3rd will be the first day of class. The application deadline is Monday, June 12th. So you have just over a week, about 10 days to uh, to apply for that program uh, if, if for our next start date. Um, we do also have start dates in August and October to finish out the year. So that'll be August the 28th and October the 23rd as well. Um, so three three more start dates for the rest of this calendar year, but the very next one, July 3rd. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, and Jennifer, it looks like you want to answer this particular question uh, live. It says, can you transfer your credits from a BA degree? Um, they're interested in the project manager program. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's for Ben too. Shreveport, I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, repeat it, repeat it for me one more time. I was reading a question about our EDD program. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Uh, Stefan is asking, um, can transfer credits happen from a, a bachelor's degree because he's interested in the uh, project manager MBA program? So no, unfortunately, the MBA program um, is the only program at Shreveport that does not accept any transfer. Well, the, the MHA as well. So any of the programs that go through the business school at Shreveport, they do not accept any transfer credits. Okay, thank you. And, and Garrett, and, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Jen. I was just going to piggyback on that too. Um, generally speaking, um, credits that you received in your undergraduate coursework do not transfer to the master's level. So even if it is a program that does receive that does assess for transfer credits, if you took it at the undergraduate level, barring MSW, um, where you would have had to have had a BSW to have those transfer credits kind of come through, um, really the program, the class work would have to have been done in another graduate program to transfer into a graduate program and be within the last five years as well. Now, I will piggyback on that. Now, if you're just trying to, I mean, to, to get into the, the MBA program, you do have to have a, a bachelor's degree. So if that's what you're talking about, yes, we accept bachelor's degrees. Um, they have to be from a regionally accredited university. Um, and then the um, the admission requirement is a, a 3.0 GPA overall for the MBA program. Um, <clears throat> there are some other, um, little nuances to the uh, to the admissions requirements. And if you give us a call, uh, an enrollment coach would be happy to kind of discuss all of those little possibilities with you. Um, but but generally, a uh, bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited university with a 3.0 GPA. Thank you. And I was going to say, uh, Garrett, this may be a question um, for you. Um, it says, how long is the MPH program or, and how long do you have to complete it? The MPH. Oh yeah, that's Sorry, a, that's a ben that's question. for it. Yeah, Ben yeah, again. Ben is have the Ben I wish I knew the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the MPH program, uh, I believe it's forty-two credit hours to complete that program. Let me double check. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure that it's forty-two hours, which would be fourteen classes. Each class is three hours. And so you'd be looking at a time frame of anywhere between 14 and 28 months, uh, depending on how many classes you take at a time. Yeah, it is. It, it's 42 credit hours um, to complete that program. And so basically how that works is you, you have 30 hours of core classes, so 10, 10 classes are your core. Um, you select two more classes as your elective, and then there are two required classes called the culminating experience. Um, which is an applied experience and then an integrated experience to round out the degree. Um, 
And so, yeah, you're looking 14, 14 to 28 months is, is generally the time frame that students completed in. Now, if you have to juggle it a little bit, it might go a little longer than that. Um, and I think the, the maximum time frame is um, around, uh, I want to say five years with that program. I know with some of our other programs, it's a little bit longer, um, but I think it's safe to say five years on that one. All right, thank you. And Garrett, now this is one that you may be able to answer for us. Uh, the question is, do LSU have billing and coding and medical business administration online? Um, they have to do online classes because of work and can't drive. So do we know how much classes cost because they're searching and the schools are too expensive? And I'm, would they qualify for FAFSA? So just like the FAFSA rundown for that particular. Uh, unfortunately, I don't handle this campus directly. However, I did do, had to do some research like Brittany did earlier. The uh, program is actually through our uh, LSU E campus, our Eunice campus. The next start for that is going to be August 21st. And the deadline looks like it's July 24th for that program. And it looks like the cost of that program per credit hour for tuition and fees in that credit hour cost is 260. So it's definitely something that can be done online with your FAFSA and all that stuff, it looks like. So definitely give us a call tomorrow and we can definitely get you over to one of our LSUE team members and they can definitely assist you with that process. Okay, thank you, Garrett. And we have a question from James uh, there. He's interested in our educational technology program. And he's asking, uh, we talked about group projects earlier um, that could be due weekly. And he's looking about, um, he's asking about the expectations for that. And he is in Asia with a 13 to 14 hour time difference. So would that be an issue? So Jennifer, would you like to answer that one? No, why don't you answer it since you did that program? All right, sounds good, because I, I kind of had an answer. <laughs> but <laughs> um, what you can expect would be um, assignments for that particular program. It's very project-based. So generally, you do not have too many group projects, but when you do, uh, you would work with your uh, classmates, find out times that works best, but everything is always due central uh, central time. So it's usually due on that Sunday at uh, midnight, so you have a lot of time to work on it, but um, they're very understanding and compromising when it comes down to those time differences. But if you do have a group assignment, which is rare for that particular degree, uh, you just work with your um, classmates to find the time that works best. And usually you have different portions of that group of um, assignment that you work on. So that also helps with that time difference too. So you would meet via Zoom um, at a reasonable time, to kind of discuss uh, what's needed, who's going to work on what, and then make sure that it's just submitted on time. But with that particular degree, which I love the most, it's very project-based. So you're gonna be working and building things on your own and then submitting that uh, once you're completed working on it. And I know we're getting close to time, so I'm trying to make sure that we go through all of the questions. Um, we look like we have another question from Laura. It says she's been told that if you change your modality from on-campus learning to online, that you cannot return to on-campus. So if you decide online learning isn't, best, isn't the best fit for you, uh, can we explain why that is? Um, yeah, so, and the question, does cover kind of the main point of this is that you can change from on campus to online or from online to on campus, but you can do so one time. And the main reason for this is that um, the programs, while it's the same curriculum, it's not always the same delivery. So the courses may be lined up differently. And if you keep switching back and forth, then it can cause some issues as far as getting you out to graduation. And, and the programs are not set up to be switch back and forth. Now, if you have done any school, um, you know, on campus, you have done work online. So we use the same Moodle platform that they do online. So it's just a matter of whether you would rather do asynchronous work or if you would rather work on terms instead of semesters as we do. Um, so it, it's not really so different that there's no way for you to know until you do it. Uh, I don't, if you have more questions about that, you know, talk to an enrollment coach and we can talk to you a little bit more about what to expect and what the differences would be between on campus and online. Um, but it, it's really only set up for you to be able to make that jump one time. 
And I would just add that um, a lot of people are under an impression that it, we, we would have different uh, professors <laughs> with the online, <laughs> but it's actually the same. So you won't have a big difference in the curriculum. You won't have a, a big difference in uh, the teaching format. It's just you won't have to sit there with the live courses if you choose to do online because of our courses are being asynchronous. But a lot of it is very similar. The knowledge is very similar. So it's just what works best for you. And if but anyone took any COVID courses, then you'll be able to see the difference between what you did online and what you did here is, is very similar. Um, it's a, the difference between the classes that were live and the ones that were asynchronous during COVID. It would be almost identical to the format for online. And for the online MBAs, um, um, are there any scholarships available? Uh, no, unfortunately, there. Well, for the LSU Shreveport program, there's not. I'm not sure about AM. I don't think there for is. For AM, we don't. Uh, for all of LSU Online, we do not offer any scholarships for any of our students. Now, if the departments themselves for each campus have something for their students, that's through them, not through LSU Online. So with LSU Online, you would not be eligible for any scholarships. Okay. And then look. Um, we have a question from Kenan that you want to answer live. He's asking for the LSU SEDD um, leadership program, assuming a desired spring 1, 2024 term start time, um, has an application package deadline been established? And if so, can they have a provisional acceptance? So they, they don't do provisional acceptances in that program. Um, th there is a... Um, an application deadline, I believe it's going to be September the 3rd, um, right around Labor Day. I, I would recommend if you're interested in that program to go ahead and apply as soon as possible, uh, now even. That is that is a very, very, very competitive program. Um, we, are, we are seeing um, currently upwards of 100 applications and the program is accepting between seven and 10 students per concentration. So they're only starting 20 students or so, 21 students or so um, every spring and every fall. Um, and so it does fill up quickly. Now you can um, get your application in and then get your transcripts in as they become official. Um, I think that would probably be the best way to go about it they're not going to make an admissions decision they won't send they'll send everyone's decisions back at the same time and they'll probably do that um mid mid november or so i would imagine so for that january start term so my advice would be to get everything in as soon as possible and then when you send in your your um letter of intent and, and all of that just kind of explain your situation while you're waiting on your transcripts and just let them know ahead of time what's going on and that will put you in a, in, a, in a much more competitive position. Thank you. And we have one question that says, I have a BSN and own a business, and they're interested in the MBA entrepreneur degree. Um, their undergrad GPA is a 2.92, and they have taken um, graduate nursing classes and had to withdraw from that particular program. So would either one of those things count against them when applying? Uh, so the undergrad GPA of 2.92, that, that should not count against you. Um, now, the, the graduate curse, uh, courses that you've taken in nursing, if you just withdrew, it shouldn't, that shouldn't be too much of an obstacle. But if you have a D or an F grade in any of those, or you withdrew, or they're incomplete with an incomplete D or an F grade, then you may have an issue. Um, with getting those transcripts evaluated. But if you just withdrew from those programs, um, you, you shouldn't have a, a huge problem with that. Now, again, they're not taking any transfer credits, so you're going to be pretty much starting your whole graduate career over again if you decide to enroll in one of those programs. But uh, your 2.92 undergrad GPA should be fine. Okay, thank you. And with our last question, it says, does LSU A work the same way? So, Shirik, if you want to kind of speak on how... Uh, the format works for LSU A. For well, this, the classroom or applying? Uh, I can assume the A strengthness portion, they weren't too specific, but if you want to just touch on, I guess, both aspects, just <laughs> be uh, sure. So with the application process with LSU A, 
Um, once a student apply and we have all required documents, then normally it's three to five business days for a decision on that application. Um, for this classroom, it's, it's the same. Um, you will never be asked to log on at a certain time or day of the week, but you do have to meet those um, deadlines of the instructors. Thank you. And again, that was our last question uh, for this evening. But if you do think of anything else, feel free to reach out to us at 833-280-5634. Or you can reach out to any of the panelists uh, this evening. Uh, we would love to connect with you directly, answer more questions, and just guide you through that application experience so that you can one day become an LSU online student as well. But I also just want to thank you again for taking out the time in your evening to join us for our virtual open house and go Tigers. Have a great one.